Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f we want. Folks, welcome back or welcome to Kinjas Movement in the Shadows. We are your host, Ben. And I am Anthony. We are very excited to have a friend in the pod today. We have DJ, former dancer. She's an MS warrior. We have Diane DJ Danga Dang Palaganas <laughs> in the pod. Ba, 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 ba. Danga. Ba, 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 ba. What is going on? Oh, thank you guys for having me here. I'm honored to be here. Of Excited course. to be thank here. Thank you for being nervous here. Nervous to be here, but no need to be nervous. We're just <laughs> hanging out. We had to bring you here. We had yeah. to. No, we we re- I mean, you obviously have a lot to share. We're, we want to get into it, but as a new guest, we always like to get a little bit of a background story. So if you can give us a little bit like of an origin story of like where you grew up and all the things. How you met us. Oh, like, let's go to the okay. origin. Where do I know? start? So I grew up in LA, actually around here, Echo Park, LA area, dancing my I whole life. I live in Echo Park right now. You do? Yeah. Steve, but that's, Look at that. that's like you know, the nice Echo Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back <laughs> in the day, like it was a little... 1984. It was a little hood. Thanks to Echo yeah, Park. it was a little yeah, hood back That's where then, I yeah. grew up. Um, dancing my whole life, I did... Um, my mom used to make me dance. As a Filipino mom, make me dance in the living room to, like, Tootsie Roll. Um, but loved <laughs> hip-hop ever since then. Uh, did drill team in, in elementary school, high school. I did... I learned about hip-hop. I danced with Jackie... Uh, I went to John Marshall High School, which is maybe like 30 minutes from here. I met Jackie Lopez there. She was the, I was in theater workshop and she was the hip hop teacher there. So I, she was my first hip hop teacher and went to college, did dance, uh, the dance major there. Was a part of ACA mm-hmm. where that's I met you, met. Yep. Ben. Oh my, that's right, yeah. ACA. I know. I, that yeah. one went over my head right now. Yeah. I was like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> it was my first year. I, my first year in college, I did ACA, and that was the year we we won all Cal beating CADC. And I know. Don't be looking at me. <laughs> Don't be looking but at me. I was a long time. We weren't there. competing. Yeah. <laughs> That was like a big thing. Wait, back what then. year? What yeah. year was this? Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then That's I, right. I remember that. Yeah. 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 That was the first time I met. Yeah. The, the magic that is Ben. Uh, <laughs> Be wow. tech now. Thank you. But it was you like are ben too kind. Then. And then I did Samahong, which is a Filipino club back then. Um, got into my roots. Did uh, dance there, and then I I. I wanted to dance everywhere, so I was. You like, did ACA and Samahong at the same time. Yeah, that's crazy. Was Samahong was that when Ryan was yeah, court? Ryan Devera? Yeah, yeah. So they're both uh, based in, at UCLA, right? Both of them. Yeah. Okay. But not only that, I was dancing in the dance major, doing dance at school. I went outside. I joined Undefined. That's in Carson. That's right. And then I loved Culture Shock. I didn't. I didn't join Culture Shock until after I graduated. But then I. I joined DVS too, yep. which is what you're a part of. And also Ryan, Ryan Boogie was on it too. Oh, the same yeah. time you were on with Ryan yeah. Kim. Oh, we were, so were yeah. you guys on DVS at the same time? Yeah. Well, yeah, there was a there bit was of like overlap. A couple, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a couple of sets we did together. Mm-hmm. Holy. Mm-hmm. I know. But there were the, the DVS was like all my all-star dancer people. Like uh, Arnell was in it. Allison was in it. Like yeah. old school peeps. Dennis yeah. Kane Deck. I yep. was like, oh my God, these are my dream dancers that I get to dance with. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah. And then uh, I just talked to Ryan. I was oh. like, you know, we knew each other before you were on Kinja's. And then he was like, he, he didn't know. I was like a freshman. <laughs> he forgot? Yeah. And what then a guy. <laughs> I showed him the video. He was like, it was a Star, Star Wars yeah, one. Yeah. He was like the main character. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. And he's yeah. like, "Oh my gosh!" He's like, "Yeah, it was." He's like, "I know you longer than some of the Kinja guys." That's <laughs> it's amazing. So crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and then I so yeah, I was dancing all the time. I joined Culture Shock after I graduated. Still doing Versa Style. Versa Style, like my journey with Jackie has been since high school. So I was dancing with her through college. She was um, in a dance major too. And then after I graduated, doing culture shock in versus style, getting into the the companies, like the organizations, not just dancing everywhere, but like 
seeing the dance as an organization and the behind the scenes with that and yeah culture shock and versus style has been with me, I mean been with me for like years like learning and growing from being a dancer to choreographer to learning about youth teams to directing with Anthony we were co-directors at one point and then um, learning how to throw out um, throw workshops and throw events and learning about that Ooh, this is a long dance journey. Yo, you That's are amazing. you are like a, a yeah. real product yeah. of the dance community yeah. out here. And then, um, and then after that's when things get a little shaky. I mean, rough. I think it was that year I was putting on so much stress on myself, and and then yeah, it gets rocky. And that was that was the year that we were co-directing Culture Shock. Yeah. This was maybe like 2012, I think 2011, 2012, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I've had a long. I, I I thought ever since I was a kid, I was going to be dancing my whole life. That was like it. Like this is going to be it's it's been going like my parents were so supportive. Usually Filipino parents, they want you to be nurses or accountants. My parents were so supportive in any dream that I wanted to do. And they're still so supportive. But like I wanted to do dancing and they're like my mom was there. She was the dance mom. She was wearing our outfit. She went to all the performances and she's still like that now. But. Um, it's like whatever I wanted to do, she was there to do it. And That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that uh, things got rocky, things yeah. got difficult. Can we can we uh, unpack that a little bit? Yeah. A little. Let's dive right yeah. in. Yes. Okay. So um, at the time, I was dancing, dancing, uh, co-directing with Anthony. I was doing outreach, trying to make money because being a part of a nonprofit. You don't get paid. You do. You volunteer your time. So I was trying to make money teaching classes. I started to teach um, in school hip hop classes all over LA, trying to make as much money as I can. And um, I started to feel tremors in my leg, which is odd because I'm pretty aware of my body. As a dancer, you know what goes on yeah. with your body. So then um, it was just weird. It was just like shaking shakiness on my knee and then um i went to my my what do you call it the doctor primary care doctor he's like oh you're just getting old i'm like what <laughs> i've been dancing my yeah. whole life and now all of a sudden i'm getting old and can i ask how old were you at this point uh 29 29 28, 29 i mm -hmm. think which is ridiculous so of course i didn't listen to him um, I didn't have health insurance at the time, so that's like a big thing. So everything I paid for was out of pocket. So I had to be really careful on who I got as a doctor and what kind of treatment I got. And um, and with the treatment, like how long it takes to see a result. So when I first started to feel tremors, I thought I had a pinched nerve. I saw a chiropractor. That was like my first like... Well, it was my primary care doctor and he's ridiculous. So then I went to like, okay, maybe I pinched a nerve or something. And then um, it didn't help. I was going to a chiropractor for a few months and then it wasn't getting better. I was still getting the shakiness and then like knee pain. And then so I had an MRI on my knee and they're like, oh, you have tendonitis. And then we'll, we'll prescribe you physical therapy. So then I did physical therapy and then my ankle started to hurt. And then I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I went to go see a podiatrist, jumping around to different doctors, not knowing that there was an underlying disease that's underneath it all. So I did that for three years, just bouncing around from doctor to doctor, paying out of pocket, no Jeez, health insurance. Yeah. And then even the the tests, like MRI tests are like a couple hundred bucks or 200 bucks or something. So uh, yeah, and I wasn't driving at the time. It's, it was like super stressful, stressful era time, but still trying to make money, trying to do what I had to do, trying to figure out what's going on. And all the while you were still dancing through the pain. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I think it was just going back and forth. I did see one neurologist and he only did um, an EKG. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the medical terms, but they just checked my heart. And then he was like, "Oh, it's okay. Everything's okay," which a uh, which is a misdiagnosis because I had I had to go through all the other doctors again to 
get a second opinion like no it's not just my heart it's like lesions in my brain and my spinal cord whoa wow. yeah that's how they diagnose ms is through the mm -hmm. mris so for anybody who's not familiar with ms we're talking about multiple sclerosis oh yeah um how would how would you define multiple sclerosis so the technical term is it's a disabling disease of the central nervous system which your immune system attacks the myelin in your nerves um i tell people it's like you're trying to charge your phone and your pet chewed off the cord or something or the yeah the cord the cable, right yeah, the yeah, cable yeah. and you the your phone would either not get charged charged at all or it, it'll be like really mm -hmm. low yeah yeah so so after all this you're talking about like three years of bouncing around different doctors people giving mm -hmm. you misdiagnoses you know what i mean paying out of pocket and then still dancing through the pain in order to like figure out what's wrong and, and it first started with tremors in your legs and then eventually you know your knees started hurting your ankles started hurting mm -hmm. um people were like checking your heart when when was it officially that someone finally was like oh this is this is bigger than all these like individual limbs or, or moments of pain this is ms oh so my i think it was my fourth physical therapist um his wife his wife specializes in neurological diseases and she was, she, he talked to her saying like, oh, this is like really weird. Her nerves are hyperactive. And she says, oh, it sounds like MS. So then he told me that it might be MS and to get a second opinion. And I looked, I didn't know what MS was. And I, I was like, holy crap, this sounds serious. So I went, my second neurologist was at UCLA. So I was like, I wasn't gonna worry about how much it cost because it sounded very serious. And the, his wife, the physical therapist that uh, specializes in neurological diseases, is the physical therapy I go to now. So they were the ones that yeah helped led mm. me to what I was going through. Wow. Yeah. So like, what what did that feel like when you realized that this this was much bigger? Mm, I cried. That's the first. I mean, it was relief because I finally know what it was. And I can start treating it, but I thought automatically I was gonna be in a wheelchair. That's like, that's like death, and I can't do anything anymore. And then someone's gonna have to take care of me, kind of deal. And then um, I was in denial because <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I was gonna see how long I could hide it for, or not let my symptoms um, show. And I don't know why I did that. Um, but that's like, I think it was me trying to process all of the new news that I got and trying to see if I can fix it before it gets worse. Mm. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back into our personal history for just a second. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I remember 2010 or 11 or something like that. Um, I was, I was also bouncing around the dance community. I just finished like, um, you know, getting off of, uh, an old sales job and, and, you know, trying to figure out what to do with my dance career and stuff. And then I had this long heart to heart and conversation with Arnell, um, who prompted me to, uh, you know, come to Culture Shock again. I, I'd mm -hmm. once been a member of the Poppin Squad. Uh, shout yeah, out Poppin Team. Squad. <laughs> with like Mike Song and, 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 and Ace and also Jet Li and stuff. But, um, and Mikey, but uh, I came back <laughs> and then he was like, uh, you should join Culture Shock. And for me, in terms of what I wanted to do at that time, uh, I was like, yo, I only want to come back um, if I'm like, you know, in uh, as a director so I can kind of explore a lot more of my like creative blah, blah, blah and whatnot. So I remember sitting down in this like epic meeting with like everybody who was on the team at that time. All these amazing ladies, right? Yeah, it was Dango, it was Yoko, Allison, Allison, Michelle. Yeah. And we're sitting there and they were grilling me. They're super like, <laughs> like, yo, dude, look at this cocky dude. Like, are you gonna, what, are you, what are your intentions? Dude, this is a nonprofit. This is like a family, blah, blah, blah. You uh -huh. know, and I was trying to like prove my worth i was like yo I'm, I'm i am about this and you know i do want to you know explore like all these things but at the same time I, I love what culture shock is and what it's been for me and yada yada and then um Dang and i end up being co uh, artistic uh directors um for for the the team that year uh we ended up collabing and stuff like that right we put yeah. the uh, audition routine yeah. together and it was <laughs> super super routine. fun um and then somewhere in the middle of the year uh you 
in essence, like from my perspective, uh-huh, uh, yeah. and just to talk about it now, you know, like dropped out. And then I ended up and like kind of finishing off the the, the term that year um, as an artistic director myself. Uh-huh. And I never at that time got disclosed to like what happened. I was, yeah. like, I was like, what happened to Ding and stuff like that. Right. Uh-huh. So like what? Obviously, now I know that yeah. <laughs> it, it dealt with, you know, you were dealing with MS and stuff. But like in that time frame, like where were you in your journey? Still not knowing what it was. And I think um, just being a part of the organization for a long time and then getting new, fresh energy coming in. I was like, I was having a hard time processing what was going on, but seeing like how much you had to offer. I was like, OK, to step back with that. Um, and let you take over the artistic part and then I was telling Allison who was our executive director like I do want to um, help with the community like, the freestyle, stuff? The oh, community yeah. stuff we did freestyle Fridays which I got to play music for every Friday for people to session to and then like the, the outreach stuff she she gave me a job or she gave me a contact to Kip Illuminar Academy that's right. Yeah. And that was like my dream job. So I felt like it was it everything happened for a reason. Like you came in and I had to step back and process what I was going through. But then other things came up, which led me to other like four years of working with um Kip. And I was able to start their dance program and use what I learned through Culture Shock in in our kid with the in school stuff mm-hmm. yeah so for everybody uh kip is a, an educational uh, is a school pretty much kip mm-hmm. illuminar academy i believe is yeah. what it was called uh-huh. and, and dango put the together the first like hip-hop dance program for the youth over there and i remember me and impact coming out there yeah and, you guys yeah did. doing little workshops like and stuff first but year. Yeah, yeah that was amazing to see yeah. you know your dance journey transcend to that yeah even though still i had no idea truly yeah. what was going on yeah. and, and i remember even asking like Yoko and stuff too. I was like, where's Dango? Like what happened? Uh-huh. But maybe nobody like fully understood nobody or knew. disclosed yeah. anything uh-huh. clear. And it was just like, okay. Yeah. You know, um, but but to to see where it, that journey led to and to like, yeah. you know, see how it became such an uh a part of your life, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It was like, whoa, that was that was a huge wake up call because you, you're right, like we are still young, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we're we're athletic, we're dancers, we we drink the fountain of youth through yeah. through the arts uh-huh. and dance and stuff, but yeah. to like, you know, um watch a friend go through something so uh severe was it yeah. was kind of an eye-opening thing you know yeah and i think um working with the kids it was i was still able to dance and move but i was teaching so i didn't have to do all the jumping around so that was yeah. like a little bit uh, less stress on my body still trying to figure out what i'm going through what what it was um yeah so let's say chapter one was you, you know, from the from the tremors in your legs until the moment that you were diagnosed with MS? Let's mm-hmm. say that that was like chapter one. What was chapter two? Ooh, um, I want to say acceptance, like, uh, yeah, maybe it, like leading to acceptance. So I was learning about it. So after I was diagnosed, I was learning as much as I could about it, learning about all the treatments that they have, they have maybe over 13 different disease modifying modifying drugs that you can take. But me, I was like, I don't want to take any of those things. Um, I'd rather do holistic or try to treat myself different ways. So I learned all about it. I the first the first drug that I learned about was called Copaxin, where you inject yourself three times a, a week. And I hated it. I hated it. It's the worst thing. I felt like I died every time I injected myself. Oh, what what hmm. did it do? It's supposed to stop the lesions. Uh-huh. So my um my immune system was attacking my nerves, and then and when it attacks your nerves, you get lesions. It's like scar tissue mm-hmm. or something, and then um it'll attack your brain, which w- which deals with cognitive things like your vision, your thinking, memory. And then it'll attack your spine, which is your mobility, your legs, your limbs. It's mostly your legs. Um, So then they give you uh, the medication to slow the progression. But the first one that they gave me was the safest one, but I was still getting new lesions. So then they switched switched me to another medication. And it's like trial and error. You try it and you see if it works for you. And if not, you try another, another one. Yeah. So then I tried infusions and... 
um, they had risks for other diseases and I didn't want to do that. So then I tried holistic for a whole year. I did everything. Like I changed my diet. I saw acupuncturists. I, I did ayahuasca. I, I tried, I saw shamans. I did all of the things that wasn't drugs, like medication. Mm -hmm. And then my doctor was like, it's, there's, it's good, but it's not good enough. Like you're, and I was like, this is the hardest thing I had to do to do it clean, like do exercise and change my diet, like going vegan or more plant based. And no matter how hard I was trying, I was still getting new lesions or it was like the, it wasn't good enough. So I had to use a medication. And then now the medication that I'm on, it's my immune system is at zero. So it takes away my immune system, but it opens me up to a bunch of infections, mm, which is wow. what got me into the hospital, which we'll get into later. <clears throat> but um, but I haven't had any new lesions, but my walking's getting worse. So then it's like trying to find the balance of mm. what could work with my body. And that's where we're pretty much at today. In essence, you're you're still kind of taking a lot of holistic lifestyle things. You're still yeah. plant based and you're still, you know, doing uh, yeah, whether we'll it be get like into it. okay, okay, let's, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. get into uh, that. Yeah, um, yeah. So still doing, I'm um, doing the medication, but so this medication that I'm on, I take it's an infusion every six months, and it takes away my B cells. So like, yeah, no, um, no immune system. So I'm those Im immunosuppressed, compromised people that why you wear a mask because you don't want these people to get sick. And so, I, yeah, I was getting infections all the time. Um, I got COVID twice. and Oh, dear. Yeah. So, and then it's, it's weird because I'm usually home. I'm home. And then if I, if I go anywhere, it would be to my physical therapy. So then I got COVID from my loved ones, the, the people that I'm closest with that, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think oh, I'd have to get a test first before I see this person. They're like, my the boyfriend, you see oh, yeah. Yeah, or like right, right. loved ones. So then you never know, actually. So then I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, as I'm like, just like, you know, listening to this story and, you know, from being somebody who literally grew up, movement was a part of your entire life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even just even hearing about how you danced through the, the pain and, and, you know, most people would like take that as a time, okay, maybe it's time to like, not do this thing anymore but you obviously love mm -hmm. everything about hip-hop movement music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then also kind of going through this journey of not knowing what was going on with your body and having all kinds of people tell you different things mm -hmm. if i was in your position i think i would just be terrified you know what i'm yeah. saying and, and and um not to say that you weren't you know but it just hearing the strength that's coming from you, you know, um, and the courage and the boldness and, and um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that sort of mental and emotional uh, learning how to get to where you're at today? I'm literally just like, I'm blown <laughs> right now. But, you know, can you talk a little about the mental and emotional journey? Yeah, I was depressed for a long time. I think depressed because I had to give up something that I love so much. And then not and then looking forward and not knowing what the future looks like. I think I do that. I think with MS, there's different stages of that. Like, um, yeah, the first time when I was diagnosed, I had to give up like that dream of being a dancer. But then it like stopping culture shock and then leading me to the kids, like doing in school stuff. And then um, and then there was a point where I needed a TA. And I had to give that dream up too. I love my job. I love my job teaching kids. So I was like, okay, but I can't do that anymore. So I have to say goodbye to that and then find another way to make money somehow. So I started doing VIP Kid where I taught English to Chinese kids online. And I loved it. I love working hmm. with kids. I remember and that. They're actually pretty awesome. And I did that for a while. Um, yeah, but then uh, going back to dance, I had... I had a hard time with my my love for actually not dance but hip hop mm -hmm. in a way because um, I had to say goodbye to dancing. But then 
I tried graffiti art and I was like, no, I'm not good at I'm good at stick figures. That's what I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> you are good at stick yeah. figures. I remember the little flip book stick figures like, oh, you guys would make. I yeah. Mean, I mean I can do other stuff, but it takes so much time, but stick figures are like my favorite thing to do. And then I was like, maybe I'll get into emceeing and I'm not good with words. Like I am like short things, but it's too much work. So then I was like, maybe I'll get into DJing. I took uh one class at Scratch DJ Academy. And that was probably the closest thing that I felt to dance. Because there was something that I did with my teacher that I felt the love of dance or the creativity in dance. And I was like, oh, I forgot what that feeling was like. So then I think that's why I kept uh, gravitating towards DJing a lot. Um, but yeah, it was just uh, my boyfriend, Michael, who's been a great support. I don't think I I could have done anything without him. He's Shout out there. Impact. I love you, bubs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I love you yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's, been, he's been my main support um, through this journey since the beginning. And then I knew, I know when I first was diagnosed and having a hard time, he would try to dance with me. Like, he's like, it's okay, we'll just dance slow. And, and he'll try to work out with me. And it was just, it was hard. I mean, I was trying so hard to stick to dance, but I had to let it go. It's like, I mean, I can't fight it or I can't resist it anymore. I just have to go with the flow. And I love that every when I had to let go of something, it led me to something greater. Mm. So would lead, like dance and then going with the kids and then teaching online and then now getting into DJing. It's I feel like there's a reason why things are happening, but I, I can't resist anymore. I just have to go with the flow. So, uh, speaking of flow, so you're DJ Dang a Dang, uh, official member of Underground Flow, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, so MS led you to the birth of DJ Dang a Dang, in <laughs> yeah. essence. Yeah. yeah. That is that is poetry in and of itself. And you went around the whole block with hip hop, you know what I mean? Trying like graffiti, yeah. trying <laughs> MCing, so you know, and, yeah. then, and then going all the way to like finding yourself at the Scratch Academy and stuff. Like that's. Yeah. That is amazing. That is that is really a child of hip hop. That's amazing. I love hip hop. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think it's dope that like you experiment and then you like you're not afraid to try stuff. <laughs> you know, that's very uh-huh. apparent. You know what I mean? And like, um, you know, as you were talking, you know, even before we even started rolling, right? Like, we we're just talking about our history of how we kind of met each other. We we met each other in these dance communities right and Mm -hmm. and you seem to be somebody who really uh values human connection human relationship community and things like that and uh i'm sure you've retained the community that has been there with you from the beginning of like your dance journey and then obviously i think there's newer communities that you are now uh Mm -hmm. tapped into you know and Mm -hmm. um can you talk a little bit about yeah your journey to find communities being an ms warrior like You know, what are some of the things that you're kind of like focused on right now in that? Um, Well, it's interesting because when uh, dealing with MS, um, before I was in the hospital, I always say before hospitalization and after because there's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. But it was mostly about me trying to take care of myself, trying to figure out what's going on in my body and um, closing myself off, living in limitations like I didn't want to go anywhere because I don't know if I could walk or it's gonna I'm gonna have a hard time walking or I don't want people to see me with a cane and that kind of thing uh, not wanting to connect with people. And then after my hospital experience, I could talk about that after, but it's like night and day. I I'm living, should I talk about that first because <laughs> let's yeah, let's talk about because... the hospital experience like what just to give context what what? Got you into the hospital recently. So, um, sorry, Val Pal, I'm gonna put you on blast. <laughs> so I went. So I had. I this is my second time getting COVID. I the first time I got it was through Michael. <laughs> put you on blast too, Michael. But I tried so hard not to get it. Yeah. I stay at home. I know it, I have issues. I'm trying not to get it. The first time I got it was with Michael, 2000. 2020 when it first came out i was like okay if i can uh, get through it i can get through anything so then two years later um val we went to uh celebrate val's birthday in the mountains at idlewild 
And then it was. Oh, I just came back from Ottawa Wild yeah. <laughs> this past weekend. Yeah. But watch out, dude. I have COVID, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, this place just covered yeah. with COVID, yeah, dude. <laughs> well, it turns out it was just a co- two couples, Funky Four. And then she ended up getting COVID. So we're stuck in the cabin and we're like, okay, we're going to get it again, obviously, because we've been together. And then so, um, yeah, we went back home. We, were, we tested positive. And then everyone was getting better except for me. But then I was already had infections on top of it. So then. Wow. And, and you're also at this place where your immune system is like at zero because yeah. of your medication, right? Yeah. So I had an infection already there. And then got COVID again. Everyone's getting better. And I'm still sick after a week or something. And then there was a, a morning where I had a super high fever and I couldn't move. I couldn't move my body. And then Michael's like, okay, I think we need to go to the ER. So then we went to the ER and they gave me antibiotics. And they're like, okay, if you don't get better, you have to come back again. So I went home, came back, and then didn't get better. Went back and was admitted to the hospital. And then... That was when the fevers were like, I was fighting fevers throughout the whole day. And I was stuck at the hospital for over 15 days. Jeez. Just fighting off fevers. And then the first week I couldn't, uh, I was, um, they had me in the COVID area. So I couldn't get any um, visitors. So it's by myself in a room. I didn't even know I had a shower. I didn't even shower. They had like uh, wipes, but. I didn't even know they had a shower. I was a fall risk. So they didn't even let me get off the bed. Every time I got off the bed, alarms would go off. I'm like, oh my gosh, the bathroom is right there. Or like they had like this, uh, this little bathroom right beside my bed. But I had to ask for permission to go use it. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It was torture. But I had a great time at the hospital. <laughs> it was painful. <laughs> but like I was... At home, it's usually by myself, but I was meeting new people. I was seeing all these nurses who are super nice. I thought teachers were the nicest people. (laughs) Nurses are the nicest people in the world. And then so, yeah, Yeah. my Alex and what's her name? I forgot. They're like your biggest (laughs) fans. Um, Yeah. But um, yeah, I was meeting new people. I was I they were doing um, testing on me and then the. The technicians were like, do you want to see your results? I was like, yeah, I want to see it. So then they were showing me, they're like, oh, this is your artery and showing me all these things. I was like learning about science and health. I was like, this is awesome. Hmm. And then they had this um, spiritual counselor there that they offered. I was like, spiritual counselor, let's see what they have to offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then I loved it. Oh, my gosh. It was like this old Asian guy that probably looks like he works at a temple, but um I loved him. That's he, the best kind of spiritual. Yeah, doctor. but no, <laughs> you he gotta was, believe it. Man. No, he was a uh, a pastor, and I I I mean, like I love all the religions, but I'm pretty spiritual myself. But I was able to talk to him without being judged, and I, I was asking him all these questions about all of the religions and uh, about Jesus and everything that I didn't. I don't go to church, so I was like asking him all these things and he was pumped up i was like yeah let's go (laughs) i'm assuming because uh, patients don't utilize them but they have like a meditation room and i was learning i was like learning so many things and i was starting like from living before hospitalization living in fear and just worried about myself to like going into the hospital learning opening up my mind to everything everybody all kind everything i was like learning so many things learning so many people i think that was like the great part about it and then um uh, michael came and then i was able to leave my room in a wheelchair and this is like the thing like i didn't want to do but anything to get out of the the room i was like let's go so then michael will take me in the wheelchair we'll go exploring outside and outside just outside i mean all these things that i took for granted i was like yes let's go let's go everywhere so then I started to feel comfortable in the wheelchair and I was always ashamed. I was like, why do I care what other people think? If I'm able to go to where I need to go easily without having to struggle with my cane, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use it. So, yeah. So um, this whole new way of looking at life from before the hospital, me, 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 into 
now being open and wanting to share these human connections with people, reconnecting. Um, ever since I was in the hospital and I did it, I, I shared a little bit. I was like, I need some prayers. People don't think like sending prayers is anything or like, okay, I'll send you prayers. But it really means, it meant something to me when I, when I asked for it because I got prayers from everybody, uh, people that I hadn't reconnected with since high school or before. Like we meet people and then we do what we need to do with them or our job. And then for some reason they're out of our lives. But then having this opportunity to reconnect and be like, oh yeah. And then what are you up to now? And then reconnecting, like, why did we stop talking or why did we stop connecting? So yeah, I've been on this journey of, mm. it's like the world has opened up to me again in a way that like, I'm looking at, I'm looking at life like a kid, but like in an adult body. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know what? It's, it was, uh, you being in the hospital recently and, and sharing your updates on like all your fevers and you were being very, you know, vulnerable and transparent and like you had really long posts and yeah. I just remember sitting there reading the next day's updates, like fever came back today, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then like days would pass and you'd be like, there's an IG store where like, you know, impacts pushing you around yeah. outside. You're like, this is the happiest I've been, blah, blah, uh -huh. blah. And uh, right when you're out of the hospital, that was when, you know, speaking of connections, that was when it was like, you know, we got to bring Dang on. We got to like, um, if you're comfortable, you know, yeah. to to talk about the story, because, uh, you know, obviously we're, you know, again, shout out to Michael. We're we're, we're crew. We're, we're fam. You know, like mm -hmm. we've we've gotten our updates from time to time whenever, you know, we've we've asked even about you and stuff and, and the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and we know it's it's a long journey. It's, yeah. it's a marathon, you yeah. know. Um, but uh, to to see such a powerful moment where you were hospitalized and stuff it was kind of like you know what like let's let's get let's get some stories out there let's let's share your story you know mm -hmm. what I mean you're you're a vibrant vibrant person and, and you have so much you know to share and you're like putting together and organizing like walks on behalf of MS you're bringing community together so they can get educated and inspired by your journey and stuff mm -hmm. like that so you know if if we could even offer any any space on this platform to share with like listeners like who you are, how much you mean to us, and and also like who you are to, you know, the entire MS conversation and and, and how we can just enlighten people with what this is, you know, like that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. So it's it's thank you for you to you for like sharing and being able to put yourself out there. And and that's why honestly why we're here right now. Oh, thanks. I mean you guys have been there since the beginning. You guys threw jams for me. You guys have been there from for Michael, which is my partner, my boo. And uh our relationship is a big part of MS too. It's not just me that's going through it. It's him that's going mm. through it too in a way that he doesn't get the symptoms, but he's feeling the effects too. And to have you guys support him and be there for him when he needs it because he tries to be the tough guy, the, you know, the man, <laughs> and then he is a man, but then he he doesn't want me to see the, the, the stuff that he goes through mm. because that's just added on things that I don't want him to go through but he's been there can we can we yeah. talk about what he goes through yeah well do i know what he goes through yeah what did he hmm. go through oh okay so in our relationship my biggest thing is my biggest thing is mobility so every everywhere i go it takes me a while but i'll get there and then michael's like go 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 he's like really fast so i'm always forcing him to slow down mm -hmm. all the time and i always feel bad but then that's probably one thing that um, troubles him because not trouble but he deals with because there's so many things that we want to do with our friends hiking or traveling that is harder for me like he has to think about okay she can't do that so saying no to some things or or accommodating for other things yeah yeah, yeah that's the biggest thing that he has to go through yeah, I think. And, and and we've definitely you know um uh, witnessed that there you know whether mm -hmm. it's uh something as basic as uh coming through to hang out you mm -hmm. know or 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 taking part in like a job or something like that there have been you know numerous yeah. times where you know michael is just like hey I, I might not be available at this time or i can't do that mm -hmm. you know because um, i'm at home taking care of dango or mm -hmm. xyz yeah um but that in and of itself has been something even for us to witness you know what i mean uh -huh. like two degrees separated in a yeah, sense and uh -huh. just like to recognize yeah he's the man you he know like he's so man. he's so strong <laughs> not just for you but even to us to show us you know the quality uh, of what it is for 
somebody to truly be there for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and to be strong for somebody. And and mm -hmm. I think we, you know, that rubs off on us too. Uh -huh. Damn, I'm getting emotional myself. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, that rubs off on us too, you know, because he's such a he teaches us a lot through his own actions mm -hmm. and how much he he cares uh, for you and how much he takes care of you. And yeah, he yeah. Does. So I mean, there are times where I always remember when when I first was diagnosed, and it, and then this is when you guys were just kicking off to world of dance and all of your just being in the light in the light for kinjas i was like you know if you want to break up with me like it's fine god damn it <laughs> but, but it's like Whoa. i already know like i don't want my troubles to be on you so like it's okay if you want to break up he's like i don't know what you're talking about like he like stuck by me mm. through that and like pro i probably wouldn't have known how strong our love for us for each other if it wasn't for ms but i know it and i see it and there are times in the hospital i mean there's times where i i have like depression moments or pity parties and then he'll be there to like he's like no we're gonna get through this it's gonna be okay we're gonna figure it out he's like we're gonna figure it out whatever if it's money problems or physical problems he's like we'll figure it out it's gonna be fine we're gonna figure it out and then there were times in the hospital where I, w I was having a hard time breathing. I had shortness of breath. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> but uh, we've been through this for such a long time, trying to, like, knowing what my body needs and him being there to support me. I was like, Michael, you just have to breathe slow so I can match my breath to your breath, and then it'll help slow my breathing down. So we found ways to work together. We've been through it together, and then I I'm so appreciative of him because, I mean, we've been th and he stuck by me to see all of it and to know what I need and and I don't know he's just awesome. I mean, like he's been through me and I've uh, been through me, been there with me and I couldn't have done it without him and he's still there and he's still awesome. Yeah, you know, again, I'm just I'm I'm kind of at a loss for words in a lot of ways, but I'm just literally, um, I'm like man you know, for you to have gone through so much hardship, you know, that probably doesn't even sum it all up that word, but like, you know, for you to experience all these things and then see light in all of it, seeing possibilities in all mm -hmm. of it. And like, you know, there's so many like places where you can go the other way, you know uh -huh, what I mean? Yeah. And, but you're choosing, you're choosing to find you know, ways to be appreciative of things like talking about the hospital experience being sort of kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, how do you see it that way? Uh -huh. But I mean, I think that just goes to show. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think your your mental strength to. Um, yeah, I mean, these are all choices that we make, mm -hmm. right? To to choose to see something one way versus another. Right. And it's not easy to make those choices either, right? Because uh -huh. you have so much against you. You know, there's so uh -huh. much sort of opposition that you could be like, man, everything is just not going well. Yeah. And then we got COVID and now yeah. I'm stuck in the hospital. And like, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm really just encouraged and inspired by, you know, what it comes from your heart before anything, you know, sure, like, mental strength is one thing but your heart and your I think you're just filled with love it's just so apparent and and hearing about you and and Michael's relationship um that story is you guys are a beacon of light straight up you know and and I think um yeah no one I don't know what it's like one to be in your physical and everything that you're going through but then also for like Michael to be there to be a support and like yeah it it doesn't just affect you it affects the people that love you and mm -hmm. but you know what's also really dope is that you know um and I, I think you know it but just to kind of reiterate like you have so many people that love you and love you guys and um you know want to support in whatever way you know and, and I'm also just sitting here just getting learning about it I don't I don't know a whole lot about MS you know what I mean so mm -hmm. I'm kind of getting educated right now too um, and I think that's important. And I think it's important to have these conversations because I think we're talking a whole lot more than just talking about um, a physical thing. I think we're talking about the, the human spirit, you know, the way that you value human connection and relationships. And yeah, people, 
sending prayers and giving you opportunity to connect with people again from your past and 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 just knowing the the value of life you know what i'm saying straight up and i think i'm getting nothing but life from you right now it is just like <laughs> shining it's so it's so cool it's so cool yeah awesome. yeah i do have another story but i don't know how much time no no we got time tell us this is my shaman story so Whoa, like okay <laughs> this is uh this is part of the hospital experience and part of i don't know what if you guys are religious or i'm more spiritual and i've been working with or like healing with michael's family so i don't know if you guys know about michael's family and how his sister is a master shaman mm -hmm. as well as his other siblings I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> no, actually, no. She has the website, so I think it's fine. <laughs> we'll blast the website. I think it's on fine. This. I've been sharing. I showed uh, uh, her ceremony on my IG. So I was so surprised that I was writing these long posts and people were reading it. <laughs> like you said, you're like, yeah. I was like, this is like Zynga back in the day when <laughs> Zynga. Zynga with Zynga. <laughs> Zynga with Zynga. But then, yeah, I was surprised that people were reading the updates. So then. There was a part, uh, well, I've seeked healing with Michael's sister for a long time. Uh, so she's a master shaman. She deals with, she's like the in-between with uh, working with spirits and the and real life. So she's that messenger in between. So I've had healing. She uh, looked at my past and she looked at my family to see if there's things that need to be healed with them or that why it's manifesting in my body. But then for some reason, this ceremony was life-changing life-changing like that day and night so she did the ceremony for um i showed a little piece of the clip which was 30 seconds but that ceremony she's like chanting and jumping up and down and like doing all these things her her husband and michael's brother and sister-in-law were lighting incense it's the whole Hmong ceremony type of thing she did it for an hour and a half of talking to the spirits and then after she told me like, oh, the spirits uh, gave you a new book of life. They said, don't forget about who you were before. You're, you aren't, she, she gave me a Hmong name, which is um, Go Nu, which means uh, loosely, loosely translated princess of the sun. And I was like, oh, that's nice. But she's like, before your, 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 your old self is dead and now you're, you're a new person with um, new life. And she's like, encourage people to call you by this name. So to give it more energy to to make it more real. So then I've been telling everybody and um, it's been day and night. Like I've been my past self was like living in fear, limitation. And now it's like hope and opportunity. And I didn't I didn't even know. It's like I've been saying I'm like, yes, man. And Jim Carrey. Yeah, I'm like, yes, yes, movie. yes. I want to do everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I want to live life to the fullest. And I it's crazy that I used to say that before, but I really I really feel it this time or I understand it. I forgot what, what was the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, was, no, I forgot. No, no. Oh, that was the monk ceremony. Yeah. So then. Um, yeah, that was so good. Can awesome. you pronounce it again? Go, go new. It's. So with, I had to learn Hmong alphabet, which they add other letters. Phonetically, it's go new, uh -huh, go, go new. But with um, Hmong, there's like an N before go, go. Oh, and go. then new, there's like an H before new, new. It's like through the uh, nostril. Go, go, go new. new. Go new. Yeah. Go new. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Like <laughs> Princess of the sun. Yeah. yeah that's sick. That was beautiful. Yeah. So speaking of this, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Speaking of I'm this listening. like new life, right? Um, mm -hmm. And new opportunities and being, mm -hmm. you know, yes person going forward and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What are things um, within your realm right now that you're like, these are things I, I want to get into. These are still things that I want to do. Okay. Well, uh, DJing for sure, which is cool because I reconnected with a lot of DJs. I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it. I reconnected with Jeff. I DJ the MS walk, which was a big thing because I wanted to do it since 2019. Mm. Then the pandemic happened and then it was all virtual. But then it was like, okay, we're going to do it. And then he did it. And then I reconnected. Oh, Dope. thanks. Yeah. Then it wasn't even a big deal. But I was like, I just wanted 
to do it. Huge deal. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And then so my story is stupid. Um, and then I reconnected <laughs> with Quenza. Uh huh. Chris Quenza and Jeff Labastida. And then like, okay, like, okay, we're gonna get into scratching. But then I I was getting gigs, like virtual gigs, or like getting gigs. And then I usually I didn't want to get into DJ because I was like, how am I gonna how am I gonna do it? How am I gonna carry all my stuff? But there's ways. There's virtual gigs that's easy because then I could do it at home. Or there's um there's ways where you can have people set up your equipment and you just go bring your computer and that's it. So um, there's there's ways to make it happen t- to still DJ if I wanted to continue DJing. And then um, I was asked to be a co-chair for the for the Long Beach Community Council, wow. which is supposed to um, bring together the MS community and basically what I did for Culture Shock, but with like the MS community yeah. and the oh, amazing Long Beach area. Yeah, that's <laughs> freaking cool. So those are the things that I'm like the next things that I'm working on. You are but, impactful. But then I didn't know I could do it, but here. Go news like yes, yes, mm. let's do it. Why mm. not? I mean, if there, if you want to do something, the world will find a way to make it happen. Or if it's not meant for you, then it won't happen. Then don't stress yourself out too much about mm. it. Mm. But I love it. I mean, I think as you're talking about, you know, saying yes to life, looking for the opportunity. I mean, I've learned too. Like whatever you look for, you'll find. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like straight uh-huh. up. If if I think that's why it's important to surround yourself with people who will reinforce the things that you believe in, mm-hmm. and and like, yeah, if you're looking for life to happen, life will happen. And yeah. I think that's what's happening for you. I mean, you even said like, yeah, I didn't think I was even able to do this, but then uh-huh. when you're like, no, nah, I'm gonna just put myself out there, and then yeah. here it is. It's it's presenting itself to you. Like that's yeah. so sick. So you've been on this journey for, my math serves me correctly, about 10 years now, right? Because, uh, well, I'm, I'm only calculating yeah, yeah, since yeah, back yeah. when uh-huh, we were on yeah. Culture Shock uh-huh, together. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, uh, your journey is personal, it's unique, it's your own. Um, but there are probably a bunch of other people out there that are in different phases of a similar journey. Like, mm-hmm. through what you've experienced uh, and what you've learned and stuff, like, what would you impart with anybody in any phase of a similar journey of MS? Mm, I think my thing is uh, just don't be afraid to ask for help. Because mm. people, I think this goes for anybody. If you're going through depression or if you're having a hard time and you need some help, you need to ask for it because looking on the outside people won't know if you're going through something serious but unless you ask for help and i think it's knowing who you are and what you need and then looking for the resources to help you get what you need so and yeah just looking at um yeah just reaching out to people Mm. human connection they're just trying to figure out you can't you can't do it on your own you can't it's going to be harder but it's so much easier if you talk to someone, talk to a professional, talk to your friends, talk to your family members. My greatest support is my family, my boyfriend, my everybody. And I, I feel so blessed to have such a great support system. I know a lot of people don't, but I think just somebody out there will be ready to help. I think that's what humans do. Humans want to help. They mm-hmm. just need to know you need help totally, because yeah. we don't know. Unless you tell somebody. Mm. And, mm. and what ended up being um, like some of your like strongest sources for like learning and information about MS? Mm. Um, let's see. The Walls Protocol. Um, there's a doctor that has MS and she uses um, diet to help combat some of the symptoms. But I think when I was first diagnosed, I wanted to learn that way. And the fact that she's a doctor that has MS and was able to um share information that that somebody with ms would understand i mean you can see a doctor any of my doctors and they don't have ms so they don't know what i'm going through but to have another doctor that's going through it that can share information on what's good for your body or someone that has ms and i'm like okay i get you you know what i'm going through so i'm Mm. gonna read more about you um what other resources the ms society has like the the first go-to um like knowledge of 
what's going on in the MS community. So that's like my first to go to. But then it's everything else that that I like. Like um, Eric Thomas is like a motivational speaker that I love, that I get a lot of motivation from. And his wife has MS. So I'm like, okay, like there's a connection with MS there. And I can see like how I can be inspired by this guy and motivated by this guy and he kind of knows what what I'm going through too probably like from Michael's side but still being able to do things and not let my diagnosis stop me from doing things that I want to do yeah thank you for sharing I, I don't doubt that there you know are people out there that can connect to this in some way mm -hmm. or another whether they're experiencing it personally or they're like witnessing a close friend or family that's ex experiencing it too and it's not often like a, a known way to engage in conversation or to like to know how to support or to know uh -huh. how to learn about it and stuff like that. I remember the very first time I heard about it, it came because of you. Uh -huh. I, I just found myself Googling that now. I'm like, what uh -huh. is multiple yeah. sclerosis? You yeah. know what I mean? And just trying to understand something. Um, and then in that way, being able to empathize even better with like my, my crewmate impact, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just so that we could be even on some common ground to, to, to just empathize. Yeah. So, yeah, thank and you it's for different because everyone that ha has MS, it's like a spectrum. There's some that's really severe, and then some that that's more cognitive. Like I said, the brain, uh, they do, they have like optoneuritis or something where they have trouble seeing through one eye. And then there's the other spectrum that's mobility. They're having trouble walking, and so everyone has it differently. And there's, I mean, people want to help, but then everyone has. A different kind of need yeah kind of idea i mean i could tell you ways to help me but <laughs> i mean it's different for everybody no tell, tell, yeah tell us ways tell us how to, oh yeah, how uh, we can mine you. is mostly financial i mean mm. like exercise wise i have the greatest pts that i can think of my i trust my neurologist to figure out the best medication for me just financial wise i'm on disability which is not a lot per month so it's always how do I pay for my medication or how do I pay for therapy, physical therapy or yeah, financial is my, my best way for people to help. Can, can I ask uh, out of like the things that you do have to expense in order to like take care of this, what ends up being the most uh, financial burden? Mm. Is it the therapy? Is it the medication? Is it more so because like, um, finding work is more difficult to even balance those things like what what are the things that you're facing mm, yeah all of them all of the above, all of the above. <laughs> it's all accumulated yeah, yeah, even though yeah, they're yeah. not really like if you look at one of them by itself it's not a lot but then when you see when them you piled, stack everything absolutely yeah. yeah yeah michael's trying his best <laughs> yeah yeah I he's mean, the man yeah he's the man if if something like this can help you know what i'm saying well one get your story out there but i mean i i mean the reason why we do this is like we want this to be valuable mm -hmm. to you to whoever listens whoever is watching mm -hmm. um and if you feel comfortable i mean i'd love to like plug however if someone wants to financially support yeah, you yeah. how can they find you and you know <laughs> what i'm saying like i think this is what this is for you know what i'm saying yeah. so if you feel comfortable with that we'll plug that stuff oh, in i appreciate too. it like right yeah. now yeah, sure. Well, you can yeah. Venmo me, direct donations. Yeah. I mean, well, any kind of donation to the MS Society will fund things that I could use. But then direct funds, you can Venmo me at ding a ding at ding a ding. Or if you'd like a T-shirt, I've been selling T-shirts for donations, so that there's like something you can get back in return, and it's helping me with my my medication costs and my therapy and uh financial stress day-to-day <laughs> yeah. -day life and um yeah, yeah, for sure. We're going to plug the, hey, yeah. everybody out there, at Danga Dang on Venmo or buy a shirt and or buy a shirt. Yeah. That's, yeah. That we're going gonna to plug all that for sure so people oh, can thanks, find you. guys. Of course, I mean, that, of course. That'll help tremendously. I think that's my biggest thing is just trying to find work. I mean, I'm not able to teach online because China is like, I had a hard time because I had, my day was 2, p, 2 a.m. to yeah you're on time yeah, frame for the other side I, of the world yeah. i was having a hard time cognitively like right balancing that out with my own symptoms so i was like i can't do this anymore michael's like okay i'm gonna take care of both of us and then you do more of what you love i was like this 
guy. This, I know, this and he, man. What I know, guy. and he was able, and then he's like, "Do more DJing," and I was like, "I didn't know what it." I was like having an issue or mm. like having a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do because I didn't know what I want to do, and he's like. He was there to support me, and I love him so much. I love you, bubs. <laughs> Shout out Impact, man. What a guy. Um, Yeah, I would love to just kind of, um, I mean, not to get like super like, you know, meta with this, but as I, I don't know what I'm, the, the word that keeps coming to my head is life, you know, mm-hmm. when I'm talking to you. Um, how, how, like, you know, your view of life, like what is life for you and in, in, like having not even having gone through it, you're going through, you know, you, you've already been through a lot, but you're living through it now. And, um, you know, like, yeah, you're, you're, it's just radiating from you to me. I just keep seeing the word life. Like, what is that to you, you know, in, in this place that you're at right now? Hmm. I just connecting, connecting with people, not saying no to things because, I don't know, maybe I'm tired or, but I'm not tired. I feel like I'm so energized right now to want to do anything. And I go back to how I was in the hospital and being restricted on the bed and not being able to do anything. Like, I don't want to go back to that. And then I think of like, what if, what if tomorrow is not there? What if this was it? Like, what, like thinking back in the hospital, like, what if this, this is the end of my life and not wanting that to be what I remember this life to be. So then since I have the chance to get out of it, to get out of the bed, to get out into the world, I'm going to take advantage of every single second that I can and not overwhelm me and be like, yes, yes, yes. And then not take care of myself too. Like, like, uh, planning out my days and making sure that I'm making the most of it, of it without being overwhelmed Mm. kind of thing. So, Every day since the hospital has been great, great days. Every single day I, I keep a planner with me and then like I write, I, I have a hard time with MS. So I was like writing things down and then keeping track and knowing what I did. I was like, wow, I ha- every, today's a great day. My goal, <laughs> like we, like we start off like, okay, today's going to be awesome. And then like looking at the, at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, we really had a good day. And then making the most of every single day and not having one day where you wasted time. Like I stopped streaming on Netflix because I I was like, I'm wasting so much time <laughs> watching all these shows. Like I didn't understand. So when I stopped streaming, I was like, okay, I'm going to do other stuff. I'm going to vamp up my website. I'm going to go do everything. Like there's so many things to do, so many ways to connect with people that I don't want to waste it being on Netflix. I could have done that in the hospital, just like chilled and watching shows mm. dang i got netflix right now. <laughs> i was like yo dude i need to get off netflix <laughs> but then yeah people share their their stuff like okay you can watch hulu or watch hbo i'm like i don't want to watch anything i just want to explore life and mm-hmm. see what kind of new things i can do and um there's some people that love to travel and find new experiences that way i'm like reaching out to people and finding new experiences with people kind of the idea i do want to travel too Mm -hmm. and i'm um i'm working on this really fancy uh wheelchair like high class black on black Ah, i was like yeah tell me you're gonna get some spinning rims on that (laughs) i know i gotta figure i gotta talk to uh lawrence because he had that cane i was like how do i get one of those canes oh you mean this cane? yeah (laughs) I, I was will, like, I will. That. Okay, it's kind of old because I got it from New Orleans. So let me fix it for you, and oh I'll give it to you. Oh my gosh! For real? Yeah, yeah. This is yours from now, but let me you fix knew. it for you. I could see. I was like, <laughs> this is look. That's this has really Dango written awesome. all over it. It's oh, like yeah. gold alligator. I know. This is the classic <laughs> Lawrence. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Stop I scrolling. Wear the, see? And I tried to find one that was like that. I was like, something. See, it's not the same. No, this is your destiny. Oh, I, I knew I kept this for a reason. <laughs> and you are the reason. I love oh, it. So, I love it. Yeah. Love That's it. what's up. Thanks. I love it. <laughs> well, Danga, um, well, we just want we want to first of all, just like before we get into the lightning round and all that stuff, like I I don't know. I'm just receiving so much encouragement from you. And I'm, I'm like, so just inspired, like even just the way that you just talked about life and, 
and and finding ways to just maximize and and live it to the fullest and mm -hmm. um yeah i think it's just i'm just so blessed to like have this conversation with you and just yeah this is really cool can i add one more thing you can yeah. add whatever I you think, want i think before i was too afraid of what people thought about me like me not wanting to be in a wheelchair like i don't know why i cared about what other people thought because it was making my life better so then i think uh for for me now it's like who cares what people think if you want to do it just do it or if it's easier for you to do just do it like don't waste your time with worrying about what other other people think it's your life live it the way you want to and you should be happy because that's what life is supposed to be happy yeah absolutely 100 percent you know it's, it's easier um to not like like that seems so simple mm -hmm. and like so duh but like sometimes people don't get like um truly aware of that until life like is you know right in front of their face and things yeah. are really really like mm -hmm. you know you got a choice right now and you know until people go through some sort of crazy hardship or they're faced yeah. with the reality of it uh -huh. sometimes the most simplest of things like yeah. don't ever really hit them so yeah. mm -hmm. i'm really glad you share that because in your voice specifically i feel like you have more weight to say something so simple actually mm -hmm. yeah let's get into this lightning round lightning, it up. Yeah. lightning round here we go yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Just say whatever's okay. first on your mind. Okay. What is your favorite animal and why? <gasps> my favorite animal and why? Uh, unicorn? Unicorn. You went straight to the mystical animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I feel like I'm mystical. Yeah. <laughs> I love but, it. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I'm spiritual. I feel like unicorns are spiritual. Hey, you're yeah. a unicorn. I love it. <laughs> I agree. I love it. Favorite Disney movie? Oh my gosh, that I can watch all the time. Yes. I, I do like The Lion King, but Same. then I do like Aladdin, one of those two. Those are my number one and two. Yeah. Good choices. <laughs> Aladdin's definitely I do there for like me. Aladdin because of the love story. Yeah. But then, yeah. Lion King because of the life story. Yep. Favorite food? Uh, um, it's a. It's. The lettuce, romaine lettuce. <laughs> romaine lettuce. lettuce. Shout out oh, lettuce. Wow. I don't think anyone's ever shouted out lettuce before. But <laughs> Yo, shout out that's lettuce. Crazy. Crazy. I can eat that anywhere. Okay. In and any other situation, I'd be like, that is boring AF. But from you right now, I'm like, yo, that's mystical as well. Romaine I can lettuce. eat a whole head of lettuce. No way. With anything. Okay. Shout out lettuce, man. Dang. Shout out lettuce. That's the word. Who is the most influential person in your life? My bubs, Michael, Michael Lore. Okay, Lanka Lore. Sexiest outfit that Michael wears. <laughs> oh, uh, naked. Oh, hey, that's let's <laughs> That's the go. birthday suit. The birthday let's suit. Oh, <laughs> it's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta pause for a second. <laughs> Oh god, so good. Why am I thinking about it? <laughs> you see it? You see it? I see it. I see it. Shout out Impact. Man. He's been working out a lot. He has been yeah. Working yeah. Out. Shout out Breeze Lee. Let's go. He got the wings now. He got the wings. Got the wings. He got the unicorn yeah. horn. Oh shoot. <laughs> Stop thinking uh, about it, man. <laughs> dude, why are you blushing? I, I gotta get back to lightning, bro. What is your what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, people that are late. Mm. I also don't like that, but I also sometimes am it. So yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. Like I can't say that. No, I feel you. Yep. Oh, or liars. I don't like liars. Liars suck. Favorite quality about yourself? Mm, mm, my quirkiness, maybe. Maybe positivity. I think I'm pretty positive. You're pretty I think you're positive. pretty positive. <laughs> sure. I think you're pretty yeah. positive. Uh, what is your biggest fear? Mm, not enough time. Is that my biggest fear? No, drowning. 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 Yeah. Drowning sounds like it sucks. Yeah, because yeah. my legs get stiff and mm -hmm. then I can't. It's hard for me to like paddle. Mm, got it. What is your proudest moment? Ooh, when I won street dance in high school. Let's go. Yeah, that was my first big, big um, hip hop competition thing that I did by my. I did a solo. It was a solo thing. I beat Donna Aragante. 
Oh, but she was my Donna. biggest competition, yeah, and I felt very dope. proud because she was dope that year. Yeah, she brought she she had different kinds of hats laid on the floor, and every hat was a different dance style. Whoa, this was in sick. high school, and she, so Donna, I was, she was so like good. beyond her <laughs> years. And I was like, damn, this is the girl I gotta be worried about. Yeah, and I freaking came in with Britney Spears, pulled off my suit thing, and like did my whole thing, and. I beat her. Sick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you're obviously into DJing right now. What are your favorite two songs to mix between each other? Ooh. I do like Chaka Khan, uh, Sugar, like Sugar, into, well, it was like the fat back, fat, like the sample it came from. Uh-huh. But, no, I take it back. It's Think. Aretha into It Takes Two. It, Rob Bass. Yeah. Ooh, I think it that's Takes Two always makes me so happy. Yep, yep. Huh? That song always makes me so happy. I know. It that two. always gets me hyped. Yeah. But I love mixing like the the funk uh-huh. song to like the hip hop song. Because I those are my favorite styles. That's like your life. Yeah, yeah. So it's always like going like, hey, you guys don't know this song. But then dropping it down there. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. What's something on your bucket list? Ooh. Um, I have this event that I want to throw. I've been, should I share it here? Yeah, of course so, you should. So, okay, so this is my dream I'm manifesting right now. So I, I developed this concept called the Sound Labyrinth. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the labyrinth where you walk around. Mm-hmm. It's like meditative. You go to the center and then you walk back out. I love it. So I, I put together this thing called the Sound Labyrinth where... Um, whatever meditation you're going through, like washing dishes or driving home or working out, my music is going to guide you through your meditation, right? That's and dope. eventually turning that into an event, um, like a, a labyrinth event, sound labyrinth, but it would be outside in nature. Like it could be at the beach or in the forest or somewhere where people are dancing where i'm djing or whatever event i would whatever whatever dj i put in there but it's it would be silent disco too and then i would they would be in their own kind of thing but then sharing that same Mm. sound together still in their own journey and then being able to take that to different states or travel to different places seeing different places i can put the labyrinth in that's my dream love it that sounds yeah. super sick. <laughs> what is your superpower? Ooh, maybe my resilience or the ability to take in a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. I would assume. You are super at that. Yeah. If you could prescribe something to the world that everyone must do once daily, what would that be? Ooh, um, smile. And through anything, like just curl the ends of your lips even when you're cooking it's crazy like if you just do that it it makes a big difference yeah i, think. I believe that just smile wow i love it, I love it. <laughs> only you would get away with these things right <laughs> i'm sitting here and i'm like okay you're right imagine going through the day without smiling yeah that would suck how no. different your day would be yeah 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 <laughs> That's like Chad's life. Chad, I've never not seen Chad smiling. Yeah. Glad Chad. Man. Glad Chad, Glad dude. Chad. Um, so the concept of mastery. Um, Bruce Lee has this quote. He says, I fear not the man that has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So the concept of just putting in the time, the hours, the, the practice, um, could be anything. I think everybody has the ability to master something. What do, what do you feel like you have mastered in life? Mm. Ooh. See. Mm. Mm. <laughs> looking at um looking at the silver lining, I guess. Wow. Looking. Yeah. Uh yeah, they're just finding the silver lining. Just like have thing. yeah, that you were talking about earlier. Like you have the choice to go two different ways. It's knowing which way to go and then having that guide your life as opposed to that instant gratification, like, okay, 
I could go this way, feel sorry for me, and be stuck there, or go this way. <laughs> yeah, totally. And for anybody who doesn't know, she's pointing in two different directions <laughs> with her hands. I know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, could... I think I think that you said it right on right on that nose right there. Just looking for that silver lining, that, mm-hmm. and and you know, we see it. We see you doing mm-hmm. that, you know, and being being a master of that. So it, mm-hmm. that's that's a great answer. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Benga, again, thank you so much for um, coming on and sharing your story, like coming all the way out here. And um, thank you for just being open and vulnerable. I know that, you know, these things are things that you've kind of, I'm sure the years, the decade that's passed since, you know, things kind of started. And um, yeah, I, I know that it's difficult, but I also see that you're excited to share these things. Because I think based off of even how you value human connection and community and coming on a platform and telling a story that I'm sure a lot of people out there can in some way, shape or form relate to it, whether you know somebody with MS or not. Um, But I think it's like, yeah, it's the, your, yeah, you're radiating life. I think that's just really what I'm getting. And um, I know you have so much more to give. I know this sound labyrinth is going to happen. Like yes. you're going to make it happen, you know, and, <laughs> um, you know, and, and we want to continue to just be alongside you through all of it and support you in whatever way we can. Um, so with that said, I mean, um, you know, please like plug, you know, how people, one can follow your journey, social media and all that, but like anything else that you want to just kind of put out there for people to, um, get to know you better or get to just know the communities that you're in that you want to kind of give some visibility to um please plug them all away Ooh, thank you kinjas thank you guys for giving me this platform i feel honored to be here to be able to share my story and for anybody to listen to it i feel sometimes it's it's depressing sometimes but there is light there's there's a good lesson to learn there's a silver lining yeah there's mm-hmm. a silver lining mm-hmm. um, but thank you guys for all the support you guys have given me since day one and uh towards me and michael um to follow more you can follow me on instagram at underscore danga underscore dang i have a website djdangadang.com where i put all my music i have my danga diary so if you like the zanga danga um <laughs> i do post post there too um and then it has like my whole journey there. I'm on SoundCloud, but I'm moving more of my stuff on my website. You can Venmo me for direct donations. I would gladly appreciate any a dollar, five dollars, anything. If you want to donate, a million for a dollars, shirt. I'll <laughs> say a it. million dollars. That would be awesome. I'm on Venmo at Dinga Ding or PayPal at Fight With Me DP, or just um, if you have if. You have a friend that needs some guidance that has MS, that don't know what to do, don't know to, who to look for. DM me. I'm glad to help spread whatever knowledge I can. It's funny because all of the MS community, um, there's DJs that are starting to be diagnosed and they're like, oh, go to Dinga. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll help. Mm. And I mean, I'll. That's I'm, powerful. I'll share whatever knowledge I can if it, it'll help you on your journey. So thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Needless you. to say, yeah. your family. So always, we love you. I love you guys so much. We love you too. <laughs> we love you too. Shout out Impact. We love you too. I love you, boo. Um, folks, thank you guys for tuning in uh, to this episode. We know, um, yeah, this is probably a little bit different from, um, you know, previous episodes, but that's why we're here. We're here to tell stories, and um, yeah, hopefully, you find value in these stories so thank you so much for listening um if you guys are digging what we're doing hop on to itunes or your podcast platform leave us that five star rating write us a review all that stuff helps us get visibility uh make sure you follow us on socials ig twitter king just podcast cast with a k we're on facebook as well and just thank you guys for tuning in and spending some time with us next time king bang Peace.